So here we can see how Tommy is replacing a first generation wheel bearing. The procedure can of course vary depending on the vehicle model. In order to get to the bearing, he needs to remove the wheel, the braking system and the drive shaft. Uh -huh. Is that the wheel bearing already? No, that's the wheel hub. And with first generation wheel bearings, the hub is not part of the bearing. So the hub has to be removed from the center of the bearing. With the help of a special tool, Tommy is able to replace the bearing whilst the knuckle is still on the vehicle. That means he could do it another way? Well, without the special tool, you would have to remove the complete steering knuckle and use a hydraulic press to press the bearing out and back in again. Eventually, you may have to carry out a complete wheel alignment. So that, of course, means more work and higher costs for the customer. Exactly. And it takes longer. And what's happening now? He's using the hydraulic cylinder to press the hub out of the bearing. In most cases, the inner race of the bearing will be stuck to the drive flange. So it gets pulled out too? Right. So the wheel bearing is totally destroyed and it's impossible to use it again? Correct. And the inner race has to be removed from the hub in a separate procedure. How do they do that? Tommy will show us on the workbench. Here Tommy is using a special tool for removal. It's quick and simple. The removal tool grabs the inner race. When he turns the spindle, the inner race will be removed from the hub. If the hub is in good condition, it can be used again. So, now back to the vehicle. You can see here that Tommy is removing the snap ring. The rest of the wheel bearing is still attached to the steering knuckle, and that has to be removed too. Wow, he really does have an impressive range of tools. Does he really need all of them? Depending on the vehicle model or the diameter of the wheel bearing, he needs different tools to carry out the repair. Now he will use the hydraulic cylinder again, but this time it is fitted with a different tool. And now he has to pump again. Poor Tommy. But take note, before fitting the new wheel bearing, the bearing seat has to be cleaned and checked thoroughly. Okay, I understand. So, new wheel bearing? Hey, you have to be careful with that. What? But why? Here we have a wheel bearing with an integrated magnetic encoder. It captures the rotational speed of the wheel for ABS, ESP and the like. If you were to lay the encoder side close to a magnet, like for instance this magnetic rod, mm -hmm. you could damage the encoder and the rotational speed wouldn't be captured accurately. So that means the wheel bearing is broken even though it's brand new? Exactly, so it's best to leave it in the packaging for as long as possible and take it only out when it's really needed. Okay, okay, but there are several other components in the box. We always provide additional components if they're necessary for the repair, all OE quality components of course. Here we have the nut for the drive shaft and the tear clip for the bearing, fittings for the track rod end or the braking system could also be included if needed. And what are the notes about? That's the fitting instructions, and they are very important. In fact, this one describes exactly what I told you about the magnetic encoder. It's important to know which side the encoder is, so that the bearings can be fitted to the correct way round. And this is where you can use the card. Oh yeah, you mean this card? Yeah, yeah. How do I use it? What can I see? The card will show you which side of the bearing includes the magnetic encoder. Okay. So now that Tommy knows, he's prepared the tools and is ready to go. Let's go. It's important that the tool is placed carefully and not tilted. Otherwise the wheel bearing seat could be damaged during assembly. When the wheel bearing is in position and the tool has been removed, the snap ring can be fitted. But make sure the opening is pointing down. Why is that? Because that position prevents moisture accumulation between the wheel bearing and the snap ring. Aha, uh -huh. great tip that. So now the wheel hub will be pressed in and then everything else can be put back in place. Drive shaft, brake-in system and wheel are fitted. Of course everything needs to be fitted using the correct tightening torque recommended by the vehicle manufacturer. And you can find these torque settings on RepExpert, our online garage portal, can't you? Exactly.